What's up guys, welcome to the garage. Today we've got quite a long video um, and this is a how to and this is to answer a question that quite a few people ask me in the comments when I say I put a new motor in it or I put a new servo in it etc. They ask me what I've done or how I've done it um, and this video will explain that. I've put the running bit um, at the start because those of you that already know what to do here you don't need to watch the whole video unless you really want to. It's quite long so I'd definitely grab a coffee before you do sit down to watch it. This is fully upgraded now, uh, running that WPL B36 gearbox, full metal gear, servo, and um, all the electronics that go with it, so transmitter, receiver, and ESC. All the links are in the description to what I've used, and I will explain as we go through the video, parts I've used, um, and how to fit them. As you can see, this thing's really capable. So this was a ready-to-run version. The ready-to-run version comes with non-proportional steering, so it's either on or off, there's no control in between comes with a tiny little 130 underpowered motor which is alright if you get a run up but there's certainly no way that 130 motor would be able to do what this thing is doing now. So lots of people call this toy junk and most people that call these toy junk have either bought one ready to run and it's broke and then they've not bothered trying to fix it or they've just thrown it away or they've never upgraded one. These things are far from junk and there is such a big community out there that are running these these MM models, WPLs, FAEs, uh, and the JJRCs, so many of them about, and they all share very similar chassis, and you can upgrade them and spend an absolute fortune if you really want to. Uh, for this one, you're probably looking at you're probably looking at an extra forty dollars on top of the truck to get it to this um, level where we are, which is still um, still cheap for what it is. I've seen loads of toy grade, proper toy grade RCs out there that will cost you a lot more than this has cost and they will definitely not um, do what this thing is doing. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. Like I said, it is a long one. Promise not to stick hundreds of adverts in there for you. Sit down, grab a coffee, uh, and cheers for watching. What's up guys, welcome to the garage. Today we are doing a toy grade to hobby grade how to. I've been asked this question quite a few times when I show some of my um, trucks and stuff like that. Uh, a few people do ask, how did you do that? How have you converted that? Uh, what did you use, etc, uh, etc. Et so I'm gonna do a quick how to video. Try not to drag it out too long. Uh, there's only a few simple steps you need to do um, to convert something that's predominantly toy grade uh, into hobby grade. So the first thing you'll definitely need is a transmitter and receiver. Now these range from anywhere from sort of $15, $20 all the way up to you know hundreds of dollars. So this one I think this is about $18 to $20, three channel. The reason I like this one is because I can drive it one handed really easy uh, and then it leaves this hand free uh, to do the recording. I've got loads of transmitters, this is just a recent one that I've bought. So transmitter and receiver, two things you definitely need to do this conversion. You'll need an ESC, now this is uh, the one I, I use this for loads of my stuff as well as, and a lot of other people use these as well. I've got links to everything in the description. Uh, this is a 20 amp brushed ESC. It's up to you what you do with the uh, battery connection. I've soldered a Dean's connector onto uh, my one because I use a lot of uh, little lipos that have got Dean's connectors. It comes with just your standard one, um, but you may need to change it over or get someone to change it for you. This is your motor connection, and you've got your battery connection there, and then there's a little switch, little switch on the corner there. That is uh, to switch your brake on off. So you can have forward and reverse, or forward, reverse, and brake, and that's what that switch is for. So, transmitter, receiver, ESC. And then the final thing you'll need is a three wire servo. This is a metal geared one. There's loads of different options for these servos. This is one of the best ones I've found yet. It's decent servos. So the truck I'm gonna convert is this MN90. Now the MN90s are not too bad out of the box. They've got decent suspension on them uh, and they look really cool. 
The only downside is they come with a 130 motor. So non-proportional steering is usually a motor in there. And it's either on or off. I'll show you that and um, what I mean when we take that out. So the first thing I need to do is get the body off and access the electronics. So these bodies are usually held on by sort of four, maybe six um, screws. Quite often there's two underneath there and then the rest are underneath the chassis. So that's the body off. So what I do now is take the old electronics out, disconnect the battery lead, and then we can remove the whole lot um, out of the way. So that's the body off, out of the way. Then that just leaves the chassis with electronics in it. So basic electronics there. You've got your little 130 motor, which I don't like on these, they're really underpowered. And then under here is your typical non-proportional steering setup. It's a little motor, got some gears in there. When you turn the switch left or right, it's literally on or off. It will just power the motor and turn the wheels. Not really any good um, for control and stuff like that. So easy enough, whip that out um, and then we can get the servo fitted in. So disconnect it all, obviously disconnect it from the steering arm as well. And then that is all out. Now the servo should slot in like that, so that fits in there. You will need to put some servo tape on here or there is a little trick you can do, but this one's quite long, the WPL is a bit shorter, um, but you can get an old like servo horn there and it should it'll go across and you can screw it in either side of the servo and it holds it in place. But for this one, that's a little bit too um, short that one, so I have to put servo tape and stuff on there. But that's where the servo goes. And then we've got the motor in here. You don't have to change it, like I said, I don't like these, so I'm probably going to change this. We are in luck. I've actually found one long enough to go across there. So I shall fit the servo now. I am going to put a small amount of servo tape on it just to um, help it stay secure in there. But I do prefer um, I do prefer fixing them down with this because they're a little bit easier to swap out if need be. Without having to try and prise them off with a screwdriver. So... Just push that down there with a little bit of servo tape on there. That keep that in, and then tuck that round right there. I think we need a shorter one for this side. It's a little bit long, so we'll grab a shorter screw for that. When you are taking all these apart, it's always a good idea to keep some spares. So that's now screwed in there, servo tape's on, that's nice and solid and it's not going anywhere. Now some people upgrade these arms, I mean it does make, it does reduce the bump steer quite a bit, uh, but I like to keep the original ones. Minimum spend for these to make them um, capable. So all you need to do is get a little bush to go in there um, and then just screw it on to the servo horn. We'll do that in a little bit. So once the servo's in, you need to look for somewhere to mount your um, ESC. You've got loads of space on the MN90 to mount it. I may um, put it in there out of the way. It depends um, where all these cables go. You've also got the option. Um, you can just put it under there and then you can mount the original switch. You can mount the switch in the original place on there. It is up to you. So for this one, to make it easier, we'll just put this switch back in the original slot because it does fit uh, it's sometimes though because the arm on the switch is a bit shorter uh, it's sometimes a bit fiddly to switch on putting it here but this one looks like it should be okay if you've got long nails it's not usually a problem but i haven't got long nails so give you a quick test yeah so i can reach that in there to switch it on and off Oh, 
always worth checking. Make sure the battery you're going to use is going to fit in the battery tray. I'm not sure on this whether the LiPo I use is going to fit in here. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, so the LiPo I'm going to use isn't going to fit in there. But... This battery will, this lithium ion will fit and it's got a Dean's connector, so I'm going to use a lithium ion. So while we've got this off, this wasn't going to be part of this video about changing the motor, but if you are doing an MN90 or any of the MN models that have this little 130 motor, I definitely recommend changing it because it's pretty rubbish. Really easy, they just slide out, then the motor should give it a wiggle, it comes out like that. And with these ones, they've got a plastic pinion on, which is okay if you're not going to put anything much more powerful in there. But if you are going to change um, to a more powerful motor, a metal pinion um, off one of the FAEs or the WPLs may be better. So talking of WPLs, I've got this B36 gearbox. Really rate these. These are awesome gearboxes. So I think I'm going to use this with a uh, 180 motor from the WPL. So fits in there uh, perfectly I'll just need to solder uh, the motor connections onto there and then change the drive shafts over because the old one has got the male ends and this one's got the female ends best way of doing this a pair of pliers or a pair of uh, wire snips you should be able to just lever them off like that there Put a dab of glue on there when you put the new ones on and then that's stopping from uh, slipping off so that's the b36 gearbox and motor on with the drive shafts correctly on you'll need to just trim the little flaps or you might need to you should probably won't because the motor is a lot bigger and um, just have to trim these bit off you can probably just cut them with a pair of snips because they're only Bit of weak plastic. One. Two. Then that slots in like that. Easy peasy. So motor and gearbox are in. Uh, just need to solder the lead on there. Like I say, this wasn't for this video. This was just about upgrading to uh, fully proportional, uh, like hobby grade, but. We might as well upgrade the motor while we've got it apart, make this thing loads better. So now all we've got to do, get the ESC mounted somewhere, feed the um, power lead through to the, uh, under the, the bonnet there, and then get the transmitter in and be ready to go. So, just skipped ahead a little bit, just fiddling about, because you've got to do a little bit on these you know, you've got to do a little bit of thinking to uh, where you're going to put everything because all of them are different. Obviously, the MN90s are all the same, but all the different, um, all the trucks are slightly different, and where you mount stuff will um, change. So I've soldered on the uh, motor connector there. If you've never done any soldering before, uh, it's a good, good way to learn. Buy yourself a cheap iron um, and just practice. Um, if not, get someone else to do it. But it is actually quite easy once you get the hang of it. I mean, I've been doing it for quite a few years now anyway. So, motor's in, B36 gearbox, really good gearbox. Uh, and we've got our ESC, I lost my trim tape, I don't know where I've put it, so I've just put a little cable tie or zip tie uh, on there just to hold the ESC above the servo there, switches in place. Um, the receiver, I found a nice little cubby hole underneath, there's loads of room under this, so just tucked it in there again, just zip tied it on just to keep it secure. I actually did drill a very small hole, as you can see there, and then you can tuck the antenna out the way. And it means um, that you should get a decent range on it because it's out and not tucked up under the truck. So uh, that's all done. And the only other thing I had to do was uh, enlarge the hole for the battery because it's obviously a Dean's connector now. So enlarge the hole for that. And we should be good now to put it back together. We'll have to tidy these cables up once the body's back on, get the battery in and give it a test. 
So what I use for my uh, for the stock steering arms, a little rubber grommet here. You often get these. So when you buy the servos, they should come with a little rubber grommet, and like a little metal insert there. So yeah, like that. You can do it with the you can do it with the metal insert in as well, but it's definitely easier to get the rubber grommet in first. You might need to help it through with a screwdriver. So get the rubber grommet in, then push the metal insert in. And then that is good to connect up to your servo. Use a decent sized screw. That these these also should come with the um, with the servo. And then it's just a case of making sure your servo is in the centre, which mine was. I set it up beforehand. Stick the screw through. I always put it a little bit high. Um, so screw it in there. I mean, you can you can fiddle about with where you want to position it. I know I always put it sort of second up from the bottom. That gives it a decent amount of throw. Uh, but we're all good now. Now we can put the body on, and we should be ready for a test. The only thing you won't be able to have now we've got this new setup is the lights. I mean, some ESCs you can get some ESCs that have got a little. Um, little space to put the lights or you can uh, get the lights coming off of the third channel of your receiver but I often just disconnect the lights and don't use them uh, and on other stuff I've got I've made uh, I've bought aftermarket stuff and put front and rear lights and stuff on it so it's up to you what you do but in this case we're not going to have lights on this so not Disaster, the battery won't fit. Right, we scrapped that idea, that big battery with the, um, that big battery with the Dean's connector was never gonna get in there that easy. So gone back to the original, uh, like your stock WPLs uh, have these and some of the other 1 16ths have these uh, two pin ones. So I've soldered that connection on and we've got one of the 7.4 volt uh, lithium ions out of, I think that's out of the B24. So we should be ready to go now. Fits nicely under the bonnet. Hood. Correct myself for you guys out there. They're going to say, what's the bonnet? It's what us English call the hood anyway <laughs> um that's it all, that's so that's it all finished we have got a digital proportional servo in there metal gear nice and strong uh, we've also upgraded the motor so we've got a, a wpl 180 motor with the b36 gearbox you don't have to put that one in i'll put a link below to the uh, fae have got a, a 180 motor and gearbox combined and it's not that expensive at all that will slot straight in there so you can use that and then we've connected it all up I will neaten these wires up, although they do sit under there, right? Even though they're loose under there, they sit under there fine. That is it already. So let's switch it on and I'll just show you the steering now compared to the um, non-proportional steering. Always put your transmitter on first. If you don't put that on first and you switch your truck on, now and again, it might run off. So, before it was just on or off, and now we are fully proportional. And then throttle. These uh, B36, these WPL gearboxes, they're geared quite low. Really good for this type of vehicle for um, off-roading and trailing. Anyway, talking of off-roading and trailing, we'll take it for a little run. Not gonna go for a big run with this. I don't wanna drag this video on too long. Hope that has helped some of you that are new to the hobby and are not sure on how to upgrade your toy grade uh, to a more hobby grade and what I've done to this will actually work on nearly everything so even if you've got something like really cheap and nasty like this thing 
um, you can add the electronics to it the only difference is on the steering on some of these you may have to be a little bit um, inventive on how to get the servo to steer the wheels with a little bit of hot glue or mounting it but the same principle for upgrading a cheap really cheap toy grade to kind of your in-between not toy grade not hobby grade uh, it's the same principle so hope that's helped uh, let's take this for a little run and I'll see you next time Faster.